Y lo que hemos encontrado aquí es que el 61% de los puertorriqueños tienen un ADN mitocondrial de origen indígena, que por sus características podemos demostrar que viene de una sola tribu, en la gran mayoría, como el 84 o inclusive posiblemente el 88% de él viene de una sola tribu, que debe ser definitivamente la tribu taína oriunda de, de Puerto Rico y de Boriquén. They say that Puerto Rico is Ephraim and Cuba is Manessas. I do not believe this is completely true. This is this week's lessons. In-depth Ephraim tribe, tribalist comparisons, Ephraim the comeback, Puerto Rico facts, and Hebrews and Puerto Rico facts. In-depth Ephraim tribe, hear me, in Revelation chapter 7 verse 3. Two tribes, Dan and Ephraim, are not sealed yet. Instead, they have Joseph and Manasseh in place, which would still point to Ephraim being included. Still, no Dan, Sadducees and Pharisees. Does this mean that Joseph lost a son in the end? No, Ephraim is not just Puerto Rico all by itself. The nation is scattered, meaning take a handful of seeds and throw them. This is also spiritual. 1 Kings 14 verse 15 And it reads... For the Lord shall smite Yasharael as a reed is shaken in the water, and he shall root up Yasharael out of this good land which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river, because they have made their groves, provoking the Lord to anger. I will explain that after this. Revelation 7 verse 3 to 8 saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our L in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Yasharael. Of the tribe of Yehuda were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Verse 6. Of the tribe of Aser were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Nephtalim were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Yosef were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. So Yosef and Manasseh will be 24,000 altogether. Ephraim and Dan are not mentioned because they will be the two tribes not sealed with believing the name of the true Mashiach. If they are not mentioned, then they will are not sealed yet, which means they will go through some tribulation like Gentiles, since they have the mindset of a Gentile or mix themselves among the people, aka nations, and are stubborn or a cake not turned, meaning burnt, burning the law, hearts hardened, etc. Intermission Apocrypha C in first Maccabees one it says in those days went there out of Yasharael wicked men, who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them we have had much sorrow. So some of Yasharael, northern kingdom, Ephraim, Dan, etc., etc., went the way of the heathen, which are Edomites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, Persians, Ishmaelites, Khazars, etc., etc., thus turn against the Lord, 
they will not accept his seal as easy as the other sons and daughters. Go tell a brother he is Hebrew and wait for his response. Fifty two. Then many of the people were gathered unto them, to wit every one that forsook the law, and so they committed evils in the land. fifty three. And drove the Yasharalites into secret places, even wheresoever they could flee for succor. Succor, help or assistance, especially in time of difficulty, a person or thing that provides help, from sub, under, plus curer, to run, wit, the natural ability to perceive and understand intelligence, keenness and quickness of perception or discriminate ingenuity. Continuing. 56. And when they had read in pieces the books of the law which they found, they burnt them with fire. Tribeless comparison. All the twelve tribes will be saved. Don't count them out of Revelation, however. The same list is prophesied in Ezekiel 48. Ezekiel 48 verse 1. Now these are the names of the tribes from the north end to the coast of the way of Hethlon, as one goeth to Hamath. Hazarinan, the border of Damascus northward, to the coast of Hamath, for these are his sides east and west, a portion for Dan. Continuing with Ezekiel 48, verse 5, And by the border of Manasseh, from the east side unto the west side, a portion for Ephraim. Ephraim, the comeback. If they are here in Zekiel's vision when the angel is taking him on a field trip of New Jerusalem, but not in Revelation when the elect 144,000 are being sealed, then this means Ephraim and Dan are absorbed or assimilated into the other tribes. Like Yahweh keeps telling us, we are not altogether labeled in one country. We are scattered. But why? They are extremely stiff-necked out of the stiff-necked people. But how? Remember, see to your father, whatever your father is, so shall you be, and your son. Ephraim males are still around, even if they mix with a Gadite, Yehudite, etc., etc., woman. It's called assimilation. And Europeans have been doing this, absorbing a culture, people, or religion into your own. Okay, so what's the difference? Here's the difference. Revelation chapter 7, they are not listed because they consider themselves not Hebrew, thus no seal yet. In Ezekiel 48, they are listed, 12 cities, 12 tribes, 12 jewels, 12 gates. Summary. Their brothers will teach them the laws of our father. This is during tribulation, revelation, while Esau's running in caves and jump, and it's expressed in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 47 verse 8. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country, and go down into the desert, and go into the sea, which, being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. Desert equals no wisdom, sea equals multitude of nations. Ezekiel 47 verse 9, And it shall come to pass, that everything that liveth which moveth, wheresoever the rivers shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live whither the river cometh. Great multitudes of fish equals people, healed equals hear the wisdom, shall live equals follow the commandments. Ezekiel verse 10 And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from Engedi even unto Eneglaim. They shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. Fishers equal 144,000. Nets equal salvation for the real Jews, according to their kinds, equals, like I said above exceeding many as the sand in the sea as the stars in heaven 
above. Ezekiel 47 verse 11 But the merry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. Merry equals very muddy, swampy. Not be healed or salt equals dead. No fruit, no sowing of seed. Thus, no children. Boricua, Puerto Rico facts. Puerto Rico facts, knowledge of. Now that we have the spiritual wisdom of knowledge to understand Ephraim a little, let's get facts on our brothers in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, Spanish for rich port. Name came from Spanish traders entering the ports. Borican, they called it Borican, meaning the great land of the valiant and noble Lord. Taino, original people. Taino, term Boricua, is a person who was born in Puerto Rico. Indian people of the island of Hispaniola in the Caribbean Sea. They also inhabited Puerto Rico and the eastern tip of Cuba. Traditionally, they grew cassava and corn, maize, hunted birds and small animals, and fish. They were skillful at working stone and wood. Their society consisted of three tiers, nobles, commoners, and slaves, and they were ruled by hereditary chiefs and sub-chiefs, meaning through the seed of your father. Indian people of the island, too, religious beliefs centered on a hierarchy of nature spirits and ancestors. Their population was decimated during the Spanish conquest. The Taino population slowly increased during the succeeding centuries. The island was colonized and the indigenous population was forced into slavery and wiped out due to, among other things, European infectious diseases. Yuck. Spain possessed Puerto Rico for over 400 years, Lord damn! Despite attempts at capture of the island by the guess what? French, the Dutch, and the British. You know the culprits. In 1917, Puerto Ricans were granted U.S. citizenship. Big whoop. Forefather of a Puerto Rican, the first settlers were the Otoroid people of Amerindian, hunters and fishermen who migrated from the mainland. Amerindian, the indigenous peoples of the Americas, are the pre-Columbian inhabitants of North and South America and their descendants migrated to the island between 120 and 400 CE. The Hebrews were permanently scattered 70 AD, 50 years before Amer Indians migration. Beginning of the 15th century, the Spaniards colonized the island. They forced the Taino into forced labor and used them for laborers. Together with the harsh working conditions, the Taino suffered epidemics of infectious disease to which they had no natural immunity. For example, a smallpox outbreak in 1518 through 1519 killed much of the island's indigenous population. In 1520, King Charles I of Spain issued a royal decree collectively emancipating the remaining Taino population. By that time, the Taino presence had almost vanished. The Spanish began to import slaves from Sub-Sahara Africa to have sufficient laborers to develop agriculture and settlements. Hebrews in Puerto Rico Facts Hebrews in Puerto Rico Facts Puerto Rican culture including Taino, Amerindians, African, or what they're trying to say is Hebrew, Spanish, European, and more recently, North American. From the Spanish, Puerto Rico received the Spanish language. 
the Catholic religion and the vast majority of their cultural and moral values and traditions. Interesting. The Roman Catholic Church has historically been the dominant religion in Puerto Rico since the Spanish colonial era. And now, the United States added English language influence, the university system, and the adoption of some holidays and practices? Summary, Puerto Rican or Boricua culture. Early in the history of Puerto Rican music, the influences of Spanish and African traditions were most noticeable. Much of Puerto Rican culture centers on the influence of music. Boricua culture, largely the descendants of Europeans or Isa, Tiano or Gad, Africans or Yehuda, or a blend of these groups, which has produced a very, very diversified population. So are you Bariqua or are you Puerto Rican? Stay tuned for this video. The Taino were a group of indigenous cultures Columbus encountered when he first came to the New World. Amerindian or Native American population of the Caribbean, uh, the pre-Columbian uh, Native American population, I would say that they are extinct. You have people saying that we don't exist. Some people are claiming that they're descendants of the Tainos. Try to challenge um, my claiming of being Taino. Que nosotros somos como fantasma dentro de una población. But the fact is that we've always been here. Our people uh, were killed, enslaved, butchered, driven to the brink of extinction by the Spaniards. The survivors uh, managed to escape to the mountains of Puerto Rico and the other islands as well, where they survived for generations. Ever since the first census took place in 1790, there has been efforts to address the complexities in so many groups in order to get an accurate population count. Y lo que hemos encontrado aquí es que el 61% de los puertorriqueños tienen un ADN mitocondrial de origen indígena que por sus características podemos demostrar que viene de una sola tribu en la gran mayoría, como el 84 o inclusive posiblemente el 88% de él viene de una sola tribu que debe ser definitivamente la tribu taína oriunda de, de Puerto Rico y de Boriquén. Puerto Ricans have been thinking about their identity for a long time, largely because of the uh, history of colonialism, but, uh, you know, first Spanish and then uh, and, and more recently the United States. Uh, and so, uh, what has emerged is a nationalist identity, uh, Puerto Ricans, and you know, the official line is that uh, we're part of a tripartite historical tradition, the Native American, the African, and the European. El primero de abril del 2010, Puerto Rico volverá a contarse. Toda persona, no importa quién ni dónde viva. Los resultados transformarán lo que sabemos sobre nosotros. Puerto Rico becomes um, also a blockage in your learning about your story because it starts at a particular time in the history of colonialism or the invasion of your territory by others that took it over. So it also rips you off, so to speak, of your story, your real story. Um, so I would challenge those, you know, Boricuas, because I see them as Boricuas, um, to think about, you know, uh, why they call themselves Puerto Rican when it isn't the name that was the original name of the island from which they come. And, and I applaud, really, because I know where that pride and, you know, that yo soy puertorriqueño, I know where that comes from. But that really is 
uh, something they need to ask, you know, themselves? Do they want to claim to be something that someone else has called them? Or do they want to claim to be who they really are? And that would be Boricuas. Sacana Boria, hasta Veira. Sacana Boria, hasta Veira. Even in the symbol of the Institute of Puerto Rican Culture, they focus on, quote unquote, the three races. And some people are asking, well, why are we focusing on one and not the other? I'm, I'm living my reality. I'm not telling anybody how to live. And I don't think people should be telling me how to live. A new short census form will help to make it even more successful. The tribal leaders need to be engaged with their tribal members, but that's just in the local front of being at home. Uh, if we, we want to include the population that's outside of our communities. These people that even genetically, we can, maybe we can identify as descendants of indigenous people. Are they, uh, are they the original ones from Puerto Rico? Or are they from indigenous groups from other parts of the Americas? It's difficult to say. And uh, probably they inter intermixed. So um, I, I don't think the aspect is here to prove something because people can create their own identities. One of the problems with uh, the focus on culture is, uh, especially uh, as articulated by the neo-Tainos, they make some claims about the culture uh, where they say that, oh, this is clearly rooted in the cultures of the ancient uh, Tainos, when that, in fact, is not at all clear. In this country, you're allowed to choose any identity. It's self-identification in the census. Um, but uh, to identify as a, as a Taino is problematic because people know that uh, in the Spanish-speaking Caribbean and in the diaspora, when you're talking about Caribbean Latinos, you're talking about a mixed population. Problems arise when these groups start having some political, economic agendas, you know, and, and that come in conflict with other groups and, and, and traditions, you know. And, uh, are we Puerto Rican first and then Taino? Are we Tainos first and Puerto Rican? Are, is this land ours or is this archaeological site ours because we're Tainos? Well, then you get into legal and political issues that are not easy to solve. You have people saying that we don't exist, and I think that that's an injustice. Greetings, relatives. If we allow governments, academic institutions to dictate to us who we should be, we're losing an element of ourselves. We're losing the right to say to them, no, this is who we are. We have the right. It's called the universal right to self-determination. It's a basic human right. We have the right to self-determine ourselves. We have the right to come together and organize and formulate community, elect our own leadership, and revitalize our culture. <laughs>